well, we are at the top of the hour, so let's get started. Um, thanks to everybody who is attending today and supporting Open Source 101. Um, I'd like to invite you to visit the Red Hat booth after this session and check out the Enable Sysadmin community at www.redhat.com slash sysadmin and find out how you can get involved. Um, our next speaker is my colleague and a community architect and editor for the Enable Sysadmin community here in its first year of life at Red Hat. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Jason Hibbets, who's going to be taking us through a very serious topic, burnout, but I think it's even more important for us to be able to uh, recognize and respond to in the difficult times that we're in. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jason. Thanks. Thank you, Baker. Um, appreciate the introduction. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm hoping that once we get through some of the material today that um, we'll have a great conversation here in chat. So I would encourage you to um, ask questions. And if, uh, if you have experiences that you'd like to share and offer up solutions to, please jump right in. Um, I don't have all the answers. I just have um, my experience. So again, my name is Jason Hibbets. I'm a senior community architect at Red Hat. I work on our Enable Sysadmin project. Um, so if, if we were at a live the live show, I would be at a booth with this sign. So yes, we are looking for system administrators to join our um, community of writers. I'm happy to address that um, later on. Uh, I've been at Red Hat for just over 17 years, and most of you probably, um, are, if you if you know me before, are familiar with my work around uh, opensource.com. And I will turn off my phone to make sure I don't get distracted. Great. All right. So uh, my story begins in 2017, uh, spring of 2017, um, and I was mentally in a pretty bad spot. Uh, it was the time of um, just the perfect storm of stress, right? The kind that nobody wants, nobody really asks for. Uh, for me, work was piling up. Um, it was piling up to a point where I couldn't process everything that was expected of me. Um, I was training for some uh, spring half marathons, which in a normal situation probably would have been stress relief. Um, however, I was really putting a lot of pressure under myself to perform at a high level. And then on top of the everyday normal family obligations, um, our household had a surgery uh, that turned us into a one car family. And for us, that really seriously um, added to the amount of pressure on me to provide and take care of the family and to basically be a chauffeur for um, me and all the kids. So I finally reached a breaking point and it wasn't just one thing. It was a culmination of things. It, uh, and what's surprising for me is it I took it, it hit me completely from the blind side. I was totally caught off guard. Uh, I never thought I would be a victim of burnout. I was aware of burnout, uh, but I was more concerned about how burnout might affect uh, members of the communities I'm involved with. Not me, I thought, um, I thought to myself, I'd never, um, I've got this craziness, stress under control, no, no problem. Um, but I remember thinking that something was wrong and that something was off. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, um, but upon reflection, um, you know, it was, there was something I just couldn't figure out in real time. So I distinctly the, remember the day uh, when I cried at work, uh, Jay basically just crumbling under all the pressure I was being put under. Um, I sat in my manager's office and the faucets wouldn't stop. It was, um, it was a pretty bad moment uh, of time for me. Um, I was at a low point and the, the best thing is that my manager assured me we would get through it and that they wanted to help. And, and then I went home for the rest of the day. I didn't open the laptop. I got some rest and I started coming up with a plan. And um, part of the plan for me involved vacation. So luckily I already had some vacation on the calendar and that was my short term target was zero in, one day at a time, get to that vacation. And when I finally went on vacation, uh, I had spring break planned with our family, spent a week at the beach. I intentionally did not pack any technology or work clothing or apparel, which severely limited my, um, my packing. If any of, any of you know how many tech shirts are in my wardrobe from all the conferences I get to go to. Um, upon reflection, I was really pushing myself to exceed the goals that my team and I co-create um, because I, uh, you know, I want that feeling that comes with um, having success at work. But this experience was different. It wasn't a healthy win. Uh, it wasn't a healthy win for my, for me or my team. 
but I felt like I was letting everyone down, including myself. When I look back, I was showing the signs of burnout. I didn't have much of an appetite. I was tired all the time. I was sleeping in and it wasn't due to jet lag. I was doing things um, like working from the back of my car while I was playing chauffeur for all the family obligations. I was cleaning off my desk like I was about to quit my job. Um, I was exercising, but I wasn't getting the endorphins and the satisfaction that I was used to. Most importantly, I wasn't motivated to do the work that I normally love to do. I was very blah about getting work done and I was avoiding hanging out with people that I love. So what did I do? I scheduled uh, my annual physical and I talked to my doctor about my situation and they recommended that I see a psychologist. So I sat on the couch a few weeks later and I talked things out and I was eventually diagnosed with severe anxiety, uh, which for me is close enough to burnout to know that I didn't want to feel the true effects of depression. What I mentioned previously are all the signs of, are, are signs of depression and burnout, uh, a lesson that I learned the hard way. So I'd like to share my experience with you so that you can recognize the signs and avoid going down this path. Some of the tips and solutions I'm gonna share may not work for your situation. They may not work for COVID-19 times or post-COVID-19 times. So your mileage may vary, but I hope you find them useful and I hope you're able to modify them for your situation. So before we go on, I must share that it is perfectly okay to ask for help. In fact, I would highly encourage to ask a trusted coworker, a friend, a family member, or a medical professional for any help or guidance if you feel like you are um, going down the path of burnout or depression. We're all human and we uh, could definitely um, use a hand um, both in the ups and the downs that we experience. So we'll talk about passion for a minute because there's a lot of passion um, in open source and in technology from all the different community members. You know, we push ourselves to contribute to projects, to, we join a community, we sign up for issues to work on, and sometimes we take on more than we can volunteer for. So I wanna take a look at some of the numbers. In, um, these are from 2018. Uh, Gallup did a survey of 7,500 full-time employees about burnout. 23% of those workers said they felt burned out more often than not. That's 23% felt they were burned out more often than not. An additional 44% uh, reported feeling burned out sometimes. So th that's a, a pretty big uh, amount of people. Uh, if we just get down to the tech industry, um, uh, uh, an app called Blind um, did a survey again in 2018, and the statistics more than double. Um, they surveyed 11,000 anonymous industry professionals, and they found that 50% reported that they are currently, uh, they currently suffer from workplace burnout. Again, those numbers are from 2018, but I think it gives us an idea that, you know, we're not alone out there in this burnout thing. Um, so let's just not be another percentage. Talk about, again, talk about passion. Passion means going above and beyond. But a word of caution, passion can actually lead to burnout. And that was probably um, partly my situation. I was willing to work the extra hours. I signed up for extra tasks. I pushed myself to perform. And I still am. But now the important piece for me is I know the boundaries of those extra efforts. I know when I can push hard and I know when I need to say no. But our work needs to be balanced with three things, recognition, rewards, and relaxation. And I'll talk more about this uh, throughout the talk. Um, I encourage you to take your passion for work and make it work for you, but balance it out with some of the tips I'm gonna share today. It's important for all of us to know the signs of burnout to take measures to prevent burnout and reduce stress. And that's what we're gonna talk about. Lesson number one know, um, uh, is to know the signs of burnout. It's pretty simple. Um, simply put, burnout is a form of depression where you're not motivated to perform the things that are expected of you at your job or in life. It's not the occasional slacking off, like having spring fever because the weather's nice, um, it's, it's a, it's a buildup of emotional stress where you just don't want to do things that are asked of you. Sometimes, um, healthcare providers may refer to this as burnout, uh, as to refer to burnout as compassion fatigue. Again, we talked about passion already, but in 2019, the world's health organization 
International Classification of Diseases, say that twice as fast, um, they actually added um, a new diagnosis defining chronic workplace stress as burnout syndrome. So I guess I was a little ahead of the curve and was diagnosed with burnout before burnout was actually a diagnosis. All right, um, there are a number of factors that can lead to burnout. It could be too much work, it could be too much travel, maybe not during these times. Uh, it could be unclear expectations. It could be unreasonable deadlines. It could be a toxic culture, or it could be work-life imbalance, uh, just to name a few. I remember one thing that was extremely abnormal for me, uh, mostly because I'm very social, is that I actually started to separate myself from my team activities and people that I would normally hang out with. So one example would be, hey, Jason, do you want to go grab some lunch uh, with us in the cafeteria? And my response at this time was, nope, I'm too busy. I have too much to do. Or, hey, Jason, Matt's in town. Do you want to join us for happy hour? Nope, I've got way too much work to do. Uh, and this is totally unlike me. In both of those examples, I would normally would have said yes and wanted to uh, be with my team and to participate with them. Um, so some of the research I did, according to the Mayo Clinic, uh, this is a list of questions that you can ask yourself if you think you're experiencing uh, the symptoms of burnout. I won't read them all, but you can see them here on the screen. You can ask things like, are you becoming cynical at work? Do you lack energy to do things you normally like to do? Are you using food, drugs, or alcohol to feel better or to not feel at all? And finally, um, have your sleeping habits changed? All of these can have an impact on your stress levels and, and can lead to burnout. So I mentioned a few of the symptoms above that I was experiencing, but let's get a bigger picture of, of the symptoms of burnout. Sometimes people get really ill. Uh, you might feel a loss of appetite or a loss of interest in the things that you normally like. Again, I was feeling separation from my team. I was, quote, too busy to be around them. Um, I personally wasn't sleeping well. I would stay up late. I would sleep in longer. And ultimately, this led to my uh, severe anxiety, or in today's terms, burnout syndrome. One thing to note, though, it's very, very difficult to self-diagnose burnout. I know it because I missed it, right? It, like I said, it caught me by surprise. So to combat that, you and your team and probably your family should also know the signs of burnout and hold each other accountable. Um, another thing to mention here is that you should also listen to your body. If your body is telling you no, then you should probably take a step back and try to piece together what's happening. Again, I think in my situation, I was kind of getting there. I knew something was off, but I didn't take the time to step back because I was too concerned about all the things that were in front of me that I um, thought I had to, needed to do. The second lesson I'd like to share are techniques on how to prevent burnout. First, you need to take time away from the job and plan time to unplug and unwind. This means planning vacations, uh, maybe now it's staycations uh, or other planned time away from work. Uh, in fact, I, um, I'm actually going to take this Friday off. Um, it's my birthday, so I can do what I want. But um, I just need a break. I need to leave the laptop down and need to stop joining 500 Zoom calls a day. And uh, I just want to unplug. So I'm going to do it. So I'm recognizing that you know I haven't had a day off since probably uh, mid-February, uh, besides the weekends. Um, but I realize it can be really hard to unplug with all the pressures we have um, for our works and, and personal lives and, and so forth. In fact, um, as I was putting together this presentation, I was joking with a coworker about, um, we kind of came up with this uh, three levels of, of paid time off or PTO. And so the first one for me, the best way to unplug is to totally cut things off. Like you don't log in, you don't VPN in, you don't check emails, you turn off notifications and, um, and for me, like I in that situation, and I'm and I'm completely, you know, off the grid. I'm usually only opening my laptop for personal use. Um, maybe that's you know, uh, looking up a restaurant that we want to go to on vacation or something like that. Uh, number two, it's a kind of a decent way to unplug, but you're kind of like half checked in, right? So you check into work, you're keeping your email going um, so that you don't have a mountain of email to come back to, but you're definitely not as responsive as normal. And then the third way. It's just kind of like the, the, you know, the crappy way to unplug. It's like, I'm available if you need me. I'll monitor things, but I'm not doing my normal office day-to-day um, -day things. So depending on your situation, the various, those three different levels I just described, um, you could probably use them in a combination. Um, but in my experience, you'll probably need at least two total checkouts a year. 
Again, that's no email, laptops down, to just try to unplug as much as you can. Um, I'd also like to mention that, that several times of the year uh, for myself can be busier than others. So having vacation, having a vacation plan and knowing when you have time to relax and unplug is great for your mental health. For example, I know that um, like the springs and the fall time periods are usually really busy for me. So while I may not be able to take um, full vacations during that time, I definitely have something to look forward to after those, um, after those busy times. Uh, since 2017, I've actually taken three one-week vacations to escape and unplug, and it is a wonderful feeling, and I feel like I'm much better in control, and it's working for me. So your results may vary. All right, uh, number three, it's easy, really easy nowadays to be connected 24-7, uh, but being connected all the time is really not healthy for us. So I'm hoping that, uh, one, um, that one thing us as humans can learn from COVID-19 is let's just slow down. I don't know why we're in such a rush all, all the time, um, but let's just take it easy. And hopefully we can um, learn a big lesson here from the stay at home and, and the situations that we have. Um, one way to avoid being always on is to share what your availability is. So I find that my calendar is a great tool for this, um, but there are special times when being more specific about your schedule beyond uh, times and dates can be really handy. So for example, if you're going to be out of the office for a conference or an event or on vacation, communicate your time constraints and your availability with the people um, you work with in advance of that time away. So uh, maybe about a week ahead of time, I might send an email to my team that says, hey, I'm on vacation next week. If you need something from me before then, let me know this week. Otherwise, it's going to be after X date before I can get back to you. Also, let them know if you're um, checking email, phone, chat, those type of things. Uh, while you're away so they you could set that expectation. If you're on vacation, your answer should be, I am not checking any messages until I get back in the office. Um, use an autoresponder to help set the expectations, to, to help share your schedule. Uh, and in that autoresponder, provide other contacts um, if someone needs assistance and while you're out. So make sure you line those up ahead of time and have your backups understand um, what uh, what responsibilities they may need to, to help back you up while you're out so that you can actually enjoy a vacation. Um, a second example I'd like to share is the best practice from uh, my team is that we take time, um, pardon me, back up. Uh, one of the things my team recently did was reinforce um, how we expect to communicate. So the, the example here is like set clear expectations on how you communicate in real time uh, asynchronously and how how your meeting should be run. And in our current COVID-19 situation, um, my team agreed that if you need a response from someone, that email is our definitive answer, not chat or any other um, ways of communication. And I'm glad that we were able to revisit that at the beginning uh, of our situation. Number four, uh, imposing limits and sharing them can help you save time and prioritize things in your life. Uh, you can set limits around the amount of time you research an issue uh, before you reach out for help. Uh, you can limit the time you spend on email. You can block time in your calendar to avoid interruptions. Uh, you can turn off chat and email notifications to stop the constant distractions. I was recently setting up a meeting and I literally saw a block of time on, a call, on my colleague's calendar that said absolutely no meetings. Uh, that was a very clear uh, warning to me <laughs> of a very clear way to set a limit. Um, and I wasn't going to violate that. And I I looked for an alternative meeting time for that situation. All right. Um, another example from my personal experience is attending meetups. Uh, in my area where I live here in uh, the Triangle region of North Carolina, we could literally go to two to three meetups a night um, uh, throughout the week and sometimes on the weekends. So um, about the time when my daughter was three and my son was nine, I realized uh, that I wanted to be home more in the evenings to see my kids. I didn't want to turn around 10 years later and see that my children are all grown up, but I met all these amazing people at these meetups. So I decided to set a limit. And my limit was that I could attend two meetups per week. So this policy for myself made me prioritize which meetups were important and ultimately gave me more time with my family. So I think I find a nice healthy balance there. Number five, having a flexible work schedule can be key to address uh, after hours and all those extra things that come up. And so I know this one is, is probably um, many folks may not have uh, the ability to have a flexible work schedule, but hopefully um, 
post COVID-19, we will um, be more open to things like this. Um, I find it also helpful for someone to, um, uh, uh, I find it helpful for someone like me to manage my productivity, excuse me. Um, I'm not much of a morning person, so I reserve my mornings for exercise. Um, the, uh, the exercise um, helps me get my blood flowing, helps me prepare the, for the day, and it's a great stress reliever. Um, when approaching your schedule, let your team know what your core hours are. Um, if something comes up, the, whether it's work or personal, that impacts your core hours, um, communicate that change with your team. So for example, uh, I've got a meetup tonight, so I'm going to be in the office a little bit later than normal, or I've got an appointment from 10 to 12 this morning, and I will not be available. Uh, my team has a, we use a shared calendar with our remote or our um, kind of non-core status updates um, to indicate when we're available. Um, having that shared calendar has been really working really great for our team. Um, and, and really it's, um, it helps address one of the most important questions for my team, or maybe not important, but most often asked question for my team, which is where's Jason at today? Uh, another example uh, if you have a late night code push, uh, maybe you adjust your day to start later or take off early on a future day. Um, my team typically will do code put, code releases uh, in the morning. So when that happens, I shift my day around. I get up a little earlier. Uh, I do the QA after the code releases in production. And then I adjust my day, making sure I don't give up my me time, which I'll talk about here shortly. Um, so as long as your, teams know, your team knows when you're available and what you're working on, they typically will respect your time. Now, I know not everyone can have a flexible work schedule, so I encourage you to find ways to protect your mental health within your bounds. Um, maybe you could start a mental health interest group um, or community of practice at your job location or with your team or with your department. Number six, uh, a little probably easier said than done for most people. So I'd like to ask, do you know where you spend your time each day? Uh, so we're going to try to see if we can use this chat functionality. So. On a, on a scale of one to five, with one being you don't know, uh, and five being you know exactly how you spend your time. Um, if you wanna share in the chat, please feel free. You know, Do you know how you spend your time, one through five? Uh, are you trapped in meetings? Are you spending hours answering email? Um, so I have a great exercise for you to, to, uh, to try. Write down what you spend your time doing for a week, and then take the time to analyze it. Figure out where you can gain some efficiency. Identify stressful things in your schedule. Try to remove them. Um, try to reduce them or pair them with a stress reliever. Um, and definitely block out time for yourself. For example, uh, if this was a normal time period, I would block out every day from 8.30 to 9.30 because that's when I um, help my daughter get ready for school and onto the school bus. And then I do a workout. Uh, I've actually updated my schedule so that um, I'm now checking in uh, with the team between 9, 9.30, and I'm doing my workout um, between 9.30 and 11, and that's my me time. And I saw a variety of, of uh, numbers here. So it looks like, for the most part, we're, we're threes and fours, and so we're pretty good. So anyone below that, um, maybe take some time to do uh, some analysis of how you're spending your time. Um, there's a lot of tools out there. Uh, I think I see someone in there um, that can help you track your time and, and, um, and do things of that nature. Uh, I don't have any recommendations per se. Uh, pen and paper works fine for what as that have fine as well. Uh, number seven, uh, one of the worst abusers of how we spend our time is unplanned work. I hate unplanned work. Right? It's like, all right, we'll do. The, we'll use the chat again. Uh, throw a plus one in the chat. Um, you know, if you agree, and maybe a negative one if you disagree. That uh, unplanned work is kind of one of the worst things in the world. So uh, I did some research here. Um, Pager Duty conducted a study about unplanned work, and they found that 70% or more of technology staff are negatively impacted by unplanned work in three or more ways. Um, they, the, what they outlined was include um, heightened stress and anxiety, reduced uh, work-life balance, and less time on important work. So I've, uh, I've got that stat here in front of me, so I will drop it in the chat for you just so you can see that a little bit better. Um, my advice would be, here and here's the link to it. Uh, my advice would be to find ways to convert or transform unplanned work into planned work. Um, one of the ways I do this, uh, so I hate uh, trying to use my email as an, um, 
um, my inbox as a task list. So um, I will uh, take something from email and put it into a Trello board, which I'll show an example of next. Um, ask yourself, you know, how can you automate something? You know, can you, um, uh, can you look at your task list and see what, what can be automated? Um, but I would also caution you to avoid getting stuck in the, I followed a way to automate that one day. Do the math, find some time to invest in, some, in automating something you can to free up time for your future self. Um, so yeah, I kind of alluded to this here. One of the techniques I used uh, is to get tasks out of my inbox into Trello cards. And uh, this allows me to you know, keep my inbox uh, very, very open. Um, I, I will typically, uh, I'll ballpark it, get to inbox zero maybe once or twice a month, which is just a great feeling. Um, another techie, um, technique I use is to, uh, to, prepare, to prepare what you can in advance. Uh, that means um, this will give you more time to react to um, any uh, fires or um, kind of need to work on now kind of items. Um, so for me, when I'm doing any sort of things around events, um, like organizing meetups, I try to do as much planning ahead of time. And so that could be things like getting social media posts um, scheduled or ordering the food, you know, a couple of days ahead of time because you'll kind of know what the order is or at least have a process to order the food so you're not ordering pizza at the last minute again. Um, so those are some things that help me to, to do things in advance instead of in the moment. Um, if you're in a team situation, is there a way to share the pains of unplanned work by rotating who's on call uh, and definitely document everything? Uh, documenting tasks so that each member of your team can perform them uh, and then practice them. And so we're actually experiencing this right now. Uh, the opensource.com team is uh, preparing for our colleague, Jen Y. Kuger, to go on maternity leave for her second child. So yay, Jen. Um, and so they are documenting things and they are right now taking turn, taking on different tasks throughout um, uh, that Jen would normally do while she's still here in case they have any questions and can um, fill up that documentation. Okay, um, number eight, I'd now like to uh, share some effective uh, ways to effectively manage stress. Um, so you should have some type of stress outlet. It could be a hobby, it could be a sport, an activity that frees your mind from work and other life demands. If you work on computers all day, I might recommend that you um, unplug and do something offline. I know for a lot of coders, um, they like to code during the day and then code at night. So maybe uh, they're working on different projects, hopefully. Um, maybe uh, using the chat, um, people could share maybe what some of the hobbies they're interested in, and maybe you can connect with others who have the same hobbies as you and, and same interest. Um, it could be activities like painting, photography, hiking, uh, music, uh, really um, reading, anything that you do to find relaxing. My first go-to for stress management is exercise. Uh, I'm totally addicted to it. I pretty much work out every day. Uh, but I like to mix it up. Um, I do cardio, I'll do weightlifting, um, swimming, running, cycling, surfing. Um, I like to, I've been getting into some uh, high intensity interval training here lately, which has been really, really fun. Um, and these are all staples in my exercise. Uh, in fact, last time I gave a version of this talk, I just did uh, the Pasadena um, triathlon uh, sprint, which was really fun to get up in the morning and get that done and then go do a talk uh, about burnout. <laughs> so, um, I used to focus solely on running, uh, and I would run typically, you know, three, three uh, half marathons in the spring and three in the fall. Um, but recently, I switched to triathlons, and um, I just like the multidisciplinary of the sport, and it's really just kind of brought a little bit more joy to my life, and like getting out there on the bike. Let's see. Um, all right, uh, still on number eight. Uh, so it might sound a little harsh, but um, you can't help your team if you're, you or your family's not in a good spot. I think we're definitely seeing that right now uh, with COVID-19. Um, I like to use this analogy from the pre-flight safety checklist that we all used to travel when we used to travel. Um, you know, quote, in the event or loss, uh, in the event of loss of cabin pressure, an oxygen mask will drop down. Put your mask on first before helping others. And so the point here is, you know, <laughs> make time for yourself, known as me time. Uh, and whether that means, um, you know, taking time for meditation, reading, exercise, your favorite hobby, you know, take the, take the time to do that and avoid creating 
and most importantly, and I want to stress this, avoid creating a habit of skipping your me time in favor of work. In fact, you should protect your me time above all other things. Um, that is, if you don't take anything else away today, I would highly encourage you to, to protect your me time. All right, number nine, uh, another way to reduce stress is to better manage your time, right? Time is our most precious resource. Um, and we've got, you get to choose how you wanna spend your time. You wanna spend it with your family? Do you wanna spend it at work, on yourself, social? It's really, it's really up to you. Um, find ways to work more efficiently, uh, more effectively, and make sure you put yourself first. Again, you can't help others if you're in a bad spot. So here are a few tips on how to improve time management. Again, your results, results may vary depending on you, how you operate. Uh, use a calendar to manage your time and block off your me time. Um, protect blocks of time so that you can actually get work done. Um, I typically will like to schedule meetings back to back so that I can uh, get all my meetings out of the way and then uh, do the work later on. Or you can, another technique is to schedule, um, I'm a big fan of defaulting to 30 minute meetings. Uh, and then maybe you block out that whole hour so that you can take care of any action items after that 30 minute meeting. Um, again, analyze how you spend your time and figure out where you can gain some efficiencies. And if, and if you all have um, ideas, uh, please feel free to share them in the chat about your, um, how, how you um, improve your time efficiency. Um, plan ahead and use a to-do list. It sounds really simple, but um, you'll be surprised how many people don't do that. Uh, start your day by doing the most important tasks first. Uh, don't waste time waiting. I hate waiting. It's the worst thing. So find uh, ways to fill uh, the waiting time. Um, you could use it for um, relaxation. Um, a lot of times, you know, just playing a quick game while you're waiting can be uh, a nice uh, way to relieve stress. Um, uh, let's see. Another way here is to batch similar items together to help your brain having from switching gears. Um, a lot of times we refer to this as context switching, it's, which is really hard to do and really um, mentally draining. And lastly here, learn how to delegate. This can be really hard for a lot of people uh, who are high achievers who just want to do things. Um, but delegating um, can be a great way to um, also uh, share tasks with your team. So while I won't play this video, I will share the slides after this. Um, Deb Nicholson has a great talk called Delegating Like a Boss. Um, but if you need help with uh, delegation tips, it uh, can be really helpful for you. All right, number 10. There's a really great article on opensource.com from Chris Short on learning the art of saying no. Uh, the first rule of saying no is to have an honest assessment of what your time availability is and what your interests are. I mentioned interest because if you don't really want to do something that's being asked of you, then don't do it. It's... Uh, <laughs> I know sometimes we have to do things, but um, maybe you uh, push back a little bit, right? Spend time doing things that draws out your passions and your interest. The hard part about saying no is that there is so much opportunity out there. Um, whether you're working on a new project or traveling to new places can really seem exciting, but being practical about your ability to participate and put in the effort that you want in to be proud of uh, could be a good filter to start with. Essentially, let's, um, using logic and reason instead of committing to something based off your emotion uh, can be really helpful. Uh, Jen Krieger uh, also has some advice on another opensource.com article about avoiding burnout. Um, she created some rules around saying yes in order to get better at saying no. So she has some questions like this. Is it no or is it not right now? Is it no or is it not the way you asked me to do it? Is it no? Or can we do a little bit now and then increment the rest later? Is it no, or do we need a better defined goal so that I can commit what I'm willing to commit? If it's yes, how do I know I can commit to the work? So a great list there from, from Jen, uh, Jen Krieger. If you decide to decline an opportunity, you should also have a graceful way of saying no. For example, um, you could respond to someone uh, saying, normally I would jump all over this opportunity. However, I don't have the time right now to put in the effort that I'd like. And nine times out of 10, people will understand. So as we wrap it up here, uh, please, please, please don't suffer in silence. Whatever you do to approach burnout, remember that you don't have to face it by yourself. Uh, approach your manager, talk to a trusted colleague, talk to your family, um, get help before you go down the path of burnout. And if you, have a, if you think you're in a more serious case, please seek medical attention. 
the good news is if you do experience burnout, uh, there hopefully will be a light at the end of the tunnel for you. Um, once I figured out what was wrong, I was able to, to devise a plan and recover. Uh, mostly I found that time away from keyboard helped me in my situation. And while I still have intense moments at work, I'm much better equipped to deal with them because of my experience and also because of the support from my team. So if you're in a situation where you don't want, uh, don't have an advocate you can talk to at work or uh, you're not getting the support you need to put your mental health first, you may have to face the fact that it may be a sign to consider a new job and get your screen shots ready for the next slide. This is what you've all been waiting for. Uh, these are the top 10 things uh, that I just went over at a high level. Um, burnout can lead to fatigue, excessive stress, sadness, anger, irritability, insomnia, alcohol and substance abuse, heart disease, and other medical conditions. So all these things are not good for humans uh, or for your teams at work. If you manage people or manage a team, not only do you need to know and understand the symptoms and signs of burnout, you need to be understanding and supportive. So please help those around you and, and, um, and under you to avoid burnout. Uh, so be sure there's a link on this page to check out the burnout index. It's a 10 question quiz you can take anonymously and um, it will help you assess your stress levels. I hope that um, you can use some of the tips I shared today and put yourself first, reduce stress and prevent burnout. Again, I'll share the slides. Um, I've got linked to a lot of the resources I mentioned here in the uh, presentation. And we've got about 10 minutes for Q&A. Again, um, I probably saw some questions scroll by, but I was not able to address them real time. Um, so if you have a question, let's queue them up. And also feel free, um, everyone, to jump in and, and help answer some questions. I think I saw a question earlier about um, how do you balance a stress reliever? Um, so my idea there was if you know you're gonna have a, a stressful time on your calendar, like an intense meeting or uh, an event, maybe right afterwards you plan, hey, go get some ice cream or go for a walk, or I'm, try I'm trying to get that balance where you've got this uh, influx of stress and anxiety, and then you wanna balance that out with something that can help take care of that. Question is, have I ever read Deep Work? Great book that mentions a lot of techniques. Yep, I haven't read it, but we can check it out. Let me um, go ahead and, here's a link to the slides, or a link to the link of the slides. We have a question from Gregory. Uh, do you have any advice regarding burnout for someone who is working full time, but is also trying to transition into a different career path, especially in the case where you need to do both? Wow. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, you're probably in a situation where you have to do both things. Um, and so uh, I would I would just probably recommend, uh, probably not a great answer, but um, figure out what's the priority um, and, and, and use, maybe you prioritize uh, different days and uh, uh, different tasks for different days so that you can balance it out. Um, but yeah, that's a tough situation, particularly when you're on the computer all day. And, and I just noticed during these times, um, like I am on the screen a lot more than I used to be. Um, so sometimes I just wanna, I just go outside for a few minutes just to, to get away from the screen. Uh, Paige is asking, how can you tell if you're burnt out at work or no longer passionate about um, about the position? Yeah, um, you know, I think uh, it's it comes down to like, do you do what you are? Are you emotionally invested in, in the work that you're doing? Um, uh, you could take that little the link to the test there um, and, and use that as maybe a partial analysis. Um, but if you're in a, if in a situation where you're just like you where you're like, just don't feel like doing it or you're finding um, you're probably procrastinating a little bit more than you used to around a certain topic or a uh, certain work, then that could be a definitely indicator of um, your, your passion is fading for something. Um, another way, Paige, is to um, maybe ask for um, a, a, new, a small new project to work on and see if that, you know, maybe test the waters on something. 
and maybe that could and maybe that doesn't have to be work related um, it could be something on, on a different open source project or it could be um, a, just a new hobby um, just to to kind of test the waters all right let's see i hope i'm catching all these um, how do you stop chosen stress relieving activities from increasing your stress I end up having to troubleshoot and take on a leadership role. Yeah, I, I mentioned that one. I probably may have talked about it too quick, but um, maybe sharing that leadership responsibility with other people so that it's not you every time. Um, that's also just kind of a good strategy for um, uh, to kind of build up other leadership for, um, for whatever activities you're working on. So um, you may have to do it in the short term and, and get before you get other people to volunteer, but um, that's one, one way uh, you could potentially approach that. Any recommendations for setting boundaries and expectations with a management structure that is less than receptive to pushback? Oh, man. Uh, first of all, you may want to find a copy of the open organization and leave a copy of that book on uh, s someone's desk uh, or anonymously mail. That will <laughs> maybe help them understand, um, uh, uh, give them opportunity to look at different management structures. Um, uh, but this is kind of like Matthew for the, the saying no part, which is really hard. Um, you know, I think in my situation, uh, it was like the analogy, if you can pick, picture a dump truck, just kind of backing up and just dumping more stuff on you. And I wasn't saying no, I was just saying, yes, I could do this all. So, um, again, I think this comes down to priorities. So, um, you can talk with management and say, Hey, look, if you want me to do these new things then I need to take X, Y, and Z off my plate. Uh, it's, it's sometimes not a great conversation to have with management, um, but they, they need to understand that we're all humans and we can only do so much. Uh, and if, and if they want you to, to, if they keep piling on, then they've got to take stuff off as well. I hope that's helpful for you. Uh, Isabel is asking, how would you recommend bringing up taking time off with your manager? Uh, as someone's more junior, I feel the pressure to hard work. Yep. I totally get you. Um, I'm in a situation where our management is uh, is very supportive. I was like, I'm taking Friday off, and they're like, great. Um, uh, you know, you can say that you went to this talk on burnout, and that they recommended taking time off, and you can share the slide deck uh, with them. Uh, but really, too, I think kind of your real question is, is around you know, kind of showing people that you're getting work done. And you know, I, I'm I'm so so fortunate to be in a situation where uh, it doesn't matter. Um, where you are or how you get your work done as long as you get it done. So hopefully um, if you if your team is um, can be more of a, a goal based team um, or find ways to highlight um, some of the team achievements um, that could be that could work well for you in that situation. Hope that's helpful. Great comments in here by the way. Thanks everyone for jumping in. Cool. I hope I didn't miss any questions. I'm just trying to scroll through and catch up here because uh, the comments are great. I hope we can export these comments because uh, this is what I really, really enjoy is the hearing from everyone else. Because like I said, I just know from my situation and my work environment. So um, it's, it's great to have, um, have everyone else's feedback and collaboration here. Cool. Hey, this was, uh, we were 80 strong the whole time. So thanks everyone for showing up. Thanks everyone for uh, supporting Open Source 101. And um, I'll, I'll be available for, for the rest of the afternoon. Um, I do have to run a meetup at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so I'll be hanging out for the rest of the event. And I really appreciate everyone's, um, everyone's input here and, and for sharing um, your thoughts too. Thanks so much, everyone.